You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's R&B Divas After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's R&B Divas After Show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We thought we uh do a little bit a little bit different this week seeing being that the uh, Divas was in LA and the title of the show was entitled California Love. Yeah, hey, what's up everybody? Love. Thank you for tuning in to Afterbus TV for on B Divas Atlanta season three, episode number nine, entitled California Love. I'm your host, Ben Erickson, and I want to introduce you to my panel, please. What's up, guys? I'm Taisha Monique. Uh, what the deal? My name is Alfred Nolan Thomas the second. Okay, so episode nine. What you guys think? Where is the California love? <laughs> It's it 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 started off with a with a bang. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, let's go into it. So Kiki, Selena, and Monifa, they were mm -hmm. at they um they were at a restaurant having brunch. The three of them together, and Kiki reveals um reveals to Selena at another time. But Selena brings it up to Monifa that. She is not sure if she wants to attend the wedding because she knows how she is. She knows her mouth. She may she may start something, mm -hmm. and she doesn't want to ruin that moment for Monifa. Was that reason justified for not wanting to attend the wedding, or should she just get her act together and just shut up and not do anything that will cause an outburst at the wedding? I mean, I think she, she's grown, so mm -hmm. it's like, you know, there's a time and a place. <clears throat> And and you should kind of know that you, one of your you know your divas uh, wedding is probably not the place for you to act out and act crazy. Now I guess if she was saying you know she couldn't trust herself to be on point, then that's that's something she got to dig in her soul and figure out because you're grown at the end of the day. You mm -hmm. should be able to ha be held responsible for your actions. I actually thought it was a, a good moment for her, especially. I mean, she's a, a, always been a wild card, always been like uh, the boisterous type. And for her to acknowledge the fact that she sometimes, especially in the wrong situations, can't control herself, I thought that was uh, big of herself to do that. And I thought it was even bigger of uh, Monifa to show what kind of true friend she is and weathering storms with people and seeing the, the greater heart within the situation. So. I commended her, I actually. Me too. I, I totally uh, commend uh, Kiki for saying that because, you know, Monifa said from the beginning, I was a little worried about inviting you to my wedding because we're not we're trying to have certain energies and we're not trying to have mm -hmm. energies that's outside of what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so if Kiki says that, hey, you know, it's nothing personal, I get it. I have certain energies about me that sometimes can can be tick tick boom. I'm not sure if I want to go and I want to mess it up. So I I thought that was I thought that was cool mm -hmm. of of Kiki, but I also thought it was cool for Mon for Monifa to say, listen, you know, we've been riding and dying for each other, and yeah. you're gonna be there. Yeah, I mean, I thought that that was obviously <clears throat> a sweet moment when Monifa got kind of choked up and yeah. was like, you know. Basically, at the end of the day, you're my girl, like, regardless of whether you get on my nerves. You know, I know mm -hmm. I got some people in my life that I, I get on my nerves and probably vice versa. And it's just, but at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, you know they got your back and I got their back. Mm -hmm. So I understood that, and that's the, the sisterhood. But I at the same time, it must be acknowledged how better than most Monifa was in this situation. Because if I had a friend that was like, fighting every time I had a special occasion, I doubt that person would be at my wedding. I, I mean, <laughs> it was it was good that she took the stance of, you know, I'm tripping and I don't know why, but I'm definitely tripping every time you either in engagement party or around your family about to do something, I'm for some reason can't control myself. 
for that, that was cool. But I would have been like, thank you, because I was about to tell you not to come because you <laughs> can't control yourself. I appreciate no. it. I, you still my friend, but you crazy when it comes out oh, of certain situations. But on the flip of it, I'll say like last weekend for the bachelor party, I don't feel Kiki started that. I, I don't feel think that so was either. her homegirl. And then when she went off last year for, Moni, for Monifa's um, announcement, that was Nikki Yobert that started all this stuff. So sometimes it's not, I don't think it's always a fault. A fault but, I agree. You know, but you still I agree. are a part of the situation getting as volatile as it gets. I mean, everybody plays a role. And it's one thing to get picked on, but sometimes it was her wanting to mm -hmm. go off. So I think it's the combination of it's not her fault, but she'll turn up if yeah. somebody gets at her. And then <laughs> it is her fault and she turned up anyway and don't care about other people's feelings. I think you just never know what you're going to get. And you know, if, regardless of whichever one is the uh, the agitator, she's still going to go ahead and turn up. I think at a certain age, you got to know that you're that type of person and be cool with it. I don't think there's nothing wrong with you being that because everybody needs that kind of friend too. But at the same time, if they know they're like that and you know they're like that, then it's on y'all to either be extra cognizant of where you're going to put them or be, you know, don't put them in that situation. Agree. Let's agree. let's now go to the rehearsal. So they are in Los <laughs> Another Angeles. Another example. They are in, <laughs> they're in Los Angeles at a place called Home. That was the place that I, I reported a couple weeks ago when Kelly Price, who was a part of season one of R&B Divas LA, she went and did her album release party there. So it's a very popular spot for the urban crowd in Beverly Hills. It's called Home, which is um, home of, uh, which is home, uh, is a synonym for home of uh, music and uh, music and entertainment. Mm. So that the rehearsals, and so when they get to, when they get to the rehearsals, mm -hmm. there's a band, but it's not the acoustic band. Right. Some of the people I recognize, and Angie was like, "So is this the band that's gonna warm up before the acoustic <laughs> people get here?" And then the guy's name was Amari. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Amari was some. Guy. Yeah, his name was Amari. He was a musical director. His name was Amari somebody, where is it at? Uh, Amari White was a musical director, and he says that that there has been lines of communications that was crossed. What the hell does that mean? And that's what I was. Whoever's you know, in charge don't know what they're doing. You know what does that mean? And then the background singers wasn't paying attention. One girl's on the phone. I'm gonna let you guys talk. So, so we're at the rehearsal. So that's the first. That's the first hiccup. And then once they're there, then they're going over songs. Latavia, first of all, is nowhere to be found. And then they start going over um, the song for what they want to 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 close out with the sister song. Yeah. And then they can't figure out the parts, Everybody and people are, are messing words. up the words. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give the floor to you guys, and now go. Uh, well, go go. I mean. <sighs> It's it was weird for me because there was a lot of situations that I I just didn't agree with and I thought it was disrespectful for the women to be as professional as they were as they are and I think that she said they had the song for a week mm -hmm. and didn't even I mean I only think they had a lot to sing within the song mm -hmm. but for them not to uh, know somewhat of the song or be able to pull it together and it be and it be in the situation where it looked. It sounded as uh, unorganized as it, it did. I don't think anybody had much responsibility, and Latavia not being there, and and just the way of I don't know who production-wise is putting the locations and handling stuff. Because you know the women aren't doing this all on their own. Right. So I think I don't want to put all that responsibility on them in the situation for how it went down other than, you know, knowing your your uh, part for a song, a song, yeah. a song. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, other than that, I felt like a lot of it was either A, put to B, a situation to deal with to make the show entertaining, which I think there's a lot of stuff that people can be wild and entertained by that doesn't have to be... Uh, not together drama because I thought that was like tacky in the sense of if this is the show that they've been talking about and not rehearsing for and arguing over there should be some kind of point of professionalism and things are snapping together and it's all about them grooming and, and, and getting into their vocals and all that. I think there's just so much other stuff going on that it's taken away from what the women the kind of product that these women coming together could have put together. Yeah. Your, your I, thoughts? I agree. I mean, well, I, I just, I just felt sad for the, for them because I just felt like, you know, they, they, there wasn't 
that com- like camaraderie when it comes to the fact that y- y- it's it's it like this is it you're in LA like you're about to do a show and even though the band isn't the band you wanted the band knew the damn song so why why you know I mean why don't you guys at least know the lyrics so that at least you have that one thing that I feel like this whole event is kind of supposed to be about and before to at least showcase <clears throat> that and, and to come and kind of just like ooh, I feel like the, a lot of it was sort of just let's just wing it and you know kind of pray for the best and i feel like they really could have um i don't know had a couple real rehearsals regardless of latavia or not and just you know for me this i don't know for me learning the sister song was the least of their worries mm. um so what that they didn't know the song and it's only been a week a song like that they had the paper you know give them 15 minutes they could easily learn that song which they did so that song was not the the problem my problem and i don't blame this on the the r&b divas i blame this on tv one mm-hmm. i blame this on tv one and they're the 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 crew who's ever the higher powers to do this mm-hmm. they are putting these women and these very uh very unprofessional settings which is bringing their brand down down. you cannot tell me that that a musical director shows up there's nowhere to be found then in the middle of rehearsal then they have to leave that was the biggest crock of crap i've ever seen that was totally Mm. that was totally uh, um, conducted concocted by by tv one yeah and it just looks fake and that's just a problem for me of how they go about to do certain things because when you go to the real um to the real showcase the that that band those those dudes they were nowhere to be found that they had different backup singers and they had the acoustic so Mm -hmm. something is it's just it's tacky it just makes the women look bad mm. um and i've been to home uh, several times and i have never heard the sound and the mic sound as crappy as it did for these girls that was crazy. so i feel like it was something that tv one did but i get for the the viewer who does not live in la who's not a part of this business they would they would take it a different way yeah, I, they feel a certain, it. I feel a certain way about it because I live in the city and I, I think it's and we I, know how these things go but in either case let's go forward so now at the rehearsals they are going over the song and they can't quite get the words and then Angie mentions uh singing someone else's part um the Denitra line I don't know uh, who, I, I, think, don't, I think that was supposed to be Latavia's part giving to Kiki and she didn't want to do nothing. And, and she didn't want to do it yeah. and then Kiki said that she was only going to do ad lib and the hook because <laughs> because Kiki's not one to even remember her own lyrics so Kiki said that that's not what she wanted to do so she had a valid reason now do you think it was do you think it was do you think it was smart of Kiki to blow up and say how she didn't want to do anything and how she walked off do you I think she extra yeah. <laughs> yeah I thought it was a uh a little lot a bit over the top but at the same time with the way things were set up and unprofessional when all this other jargon was on their mind i don't blame her for being the one to blow up Mm -hmm. because it wasn't a professional setting you're Mm -hmm. dealing with the fact that the band is all crazy Mm -hmm. and then these changes and then that i'm sure other emotions are are definitely going on behind her acting the way she did, of course, that was a kiki move. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I I wasn't mad at her. I was like, if if things weren't together and then this and this, I'm like, I'll probably go off too if I was that type of person. Mm-hmm. But for her, you know she's a volatile person, so I, did, I, I couldn't get mad at her. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I just, I felt like it was a, a little over the, a little extra, but then again, that's, Kiki is extra, um, in my opinion, um, and not always in a bad way. It's just sometimes she's a little over the top. But I, I mean, she said she's not singing any more than that, and that is it. It's one of those things, like with when Latavia said she's not singing, like nobody's really listening to to them to and each that, other. And that was and that was Kiki's problem is that people weren't listening. She yeah. feels that when she says 
Like she said, she didn't want to do the acoustic guitar. And, and I do get what Kiki is saying because Kiki, it always appears that she always has a give in. When mm -hmm. she doesn't want to sing, she ha she always has to sing. So I can I can see uh, Kiki's frustration Wanting with, to this, stand her ground. with this whole thing. And so then Angie responds back after she says, well, I ain't singing a song. Angie says, well, sister's my song, and I don't want nobody singing but Angie Stone. That was that was a nice <laughs> comeback, Angie. But you know good and well, you was going to have them girls come <laughs> yes. up. So come you, on now. Angie, have it. Ain't doing all that hard <laughs> but, work for nothing. Right. So now Latavia, they've had one or two rehearsals. Mm. And now one. at the very last, oh, at the very last sound check, then Latavia shows up. Go in. <laughs> Go in. Man, I, I don't even think I have to. I, I mean, Kiki right. did on the show. <laughs> That's know what, what I thought and was interesting. Was that Kiki? It was. It was the off. epitome of what I was saying in um, our other shows, where that whole victim mentality, and then Kiki called it with the every time we talk to you, you sick on something, mm -hmm. and then she blurted out, "My head hurt. I'm on a period." I was like, it just. It was like so, and then. She looked like somebody who got caught stealing, and then everybody's like talking to you about I, it, and she's just like, um, uh, 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 uh. "Yeah, okay." Yeah, I, she couldn't I, find the words I even wrote, to. I wrote some of the things down because I thought it was funny. So, yeah. <laughs> so Selena <laughs> said, Wait, "Selena I, I says, did you plan a song?" Latavia goes, "I mean, I, I." Monifa starts laughing and say, "No, Latavia, girl, just say no." Yeah, yes, girl, okay. just say no. Then. Then Monifa, Mo Monifa says it feels a little unfair. Uh, it feels a little unfair in its unsetting. And then Latavia was like, "Well, saying um, uh, she didn't want. Um, I don't want it had." <laughs> oh, she says that. Um, she says, "Well, saying you know, I I ain't had no rehearsal." And then Kiki said, "It would be truthful. <laughs> ain't nobody <laughs> had no effing rehearsal." <laughs> so then. <laughs> that was a good one. So then uh, she says, all this talking back and forth is making my head hurt. Then someone said, girl, why are you always being sick? <laughs> and she says, I'm crampy because I'm on my period. And then, <laughs> and then Kiki said, well, we all in sync because... Because my t <laughs> because it's time to change my tampon, amen, amen. so we can get over this. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm always fending for Latavia, <laughs> but what? this time there is no way that I can def that I can fend for I can defend her because, listen, if you don't want to do something, just don't do it. When they said, "Are you gonna sing?" I would have sat there boldly and said, "No, I said I wasn't gonna sing. I'm just here to be cute and and support you guys." If she would have said that, that whole argument would have never happened. I was just laughing at the part where they were like, well, Monifa was like, what, she just going to sit up there on the stage? Like, don't you think that's going to look weird? Like, just sitting there. But I'm like, how you even, she got um, gonads for definitely deciding to sit there amongst them and be in that situation. She's like, well, I came. I, I'm I, here. I, but if you, okay. got, if you got the balls to do all that, cool. just imagine that effort to do put yourself in that awkward situation put towards doing an actual song or bringing something to the table all this negative stagnant energy that that okay. she's placed in the show mm. is just the epitome of what people shouldn't do and how people shouldn't act in in in, in certain situations and then for those who are hungry, it's like it's a slap. It's kind of like a slap in the face. Well, again, that's where we'll uh, disagree, but I'm not going to keep spilling the same thing I say every week because she was asked to be on the show. Yeah. No one no one came after her. She was asked to be mm -hmm. on the show. She said she's not a lead singer, and if she want to go and make her 5,000 episode or how much ever they're paying for this, I'm not mad at her for getting her money because she says I'm not a singer. So I think, I, think need to, to. I think people really need to get over that fact. But now... La Monifa tells Kiki that she needs to go and talk to her because Kiki feels a certain way. Mm -hmm. So when Latavia enters uh, backstage, she says, girl, you done already got on my nerves. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> stop complaining. We're not in the mood for all these side comments. And uh, L L Latavia said, you know, she's not in the mood for all the side comments. Mm -hmm. And Kiki said, well, you know, this is how we all feel. So Kiki basically told her, stop complaining. Right. Why are you here? Because everybody's got problems. Everybody's going through their own thing. Monifa's mm -hmm. like, I'm planning a wedding. You don't think I have stress on me? I mean, at the end of the day, they've all got things going on. And I think Kiki's point was just to be like, look, like we understand where you're coming from. Like we understand. But at the end of the day, we all have things to do 
issues to deal with in our life. So let's figure out what we're going to do from this point because you are here. And then Latavi even said, like, well, you know, I'm, uh, I came because I'm open to see what's going on. But And then, see, that's where she lost me again because you're open. You came and see where we are. What You showed up at the very last minute. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, well. Yeah. You showed up at the last <laughs> minute, you know, and then they're fighting. So obviously they weren't going to be a sound check. So you came, but you came a little too late, Latavia. And but I think that was a, a point that of was, purpose. That was I, a, yeah, She totally. wanted to me get too. there to where there was no time, just like her always. Like, that, I don't, okay, for the position of she doesn't deserve to be there thing, I don't mind her there if she was being productive and not coming up with excuses that were obviously false. You know, I felt like, as people, as women and men, that you're supposed to stand on your your word or your 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 morals or whatever, you're, and and those were the faulty parts that made it, I guess, aggravating to see her in that position. And I mean, trying to do things that you know are like sly little ways to get away with not working or putting in any effort. I think that's what made it a uh, a weird look upon how I would react to her as an image, you know, or her as an artist, even, you know what I mean? I was like, it, it's one thing if you apply yourself and do other things, anybody trying to, because I don't think any of the women actually had a problem with her not singing. Now, if you're going to sit there, not say nothing, not do nothing, and then not sing, all we got to do is talk about singing it. We're going to bug you about it. I think it's easier for the girls because they're, they're true solo artists, they're true lead singers. I agree. And it's easier for, okay. You know Part of how, me feels bad for you know, her. Uh, you know how we get on Megan and her bad singing? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now for someone like yourself who could sing or other people who could, who could sing, imagine being around, imagine someone I, I, this is, I feel bad for putting Megan on the spot. But imagine, <laughs> but imagine, still love it though. imagine her being in a room full of singers and then she has a mediocre voice. You have Monifa, Selena, you have these women who can really sing and say what you want about Mother Stone, but Mother Stone can sing too. Yeah. So you imagine being around all of these women and then you haven't really sang in, in, you know, in public in a long time. And now you have to sing in front of someone like Kiki Wyatt who has like a five, six, seven, eight, twelve octave where she can <laughs> sing the tenor note all the way to the first soprano. Mm. I just imagine how it would feel mm -hmm. if, you know, if that was your in your predicament, mm -hmm. or if you were some little some if you were just new to L.A. and you were some new little dancer from from some little small street, and then all of a sudden you're around all these big choreographers and stuff, you would feel a little intimidated too. That's all I'm saying. But I I agree. I, I that's the one part of me that has throughout this whole thing has kind of realized that she probably. Yes, she, you know, she doesn't want to sing, she doesn't want to sing, but I, it's a lot of the, that insecurity and, and just knowing that she's probably not <clears throat> at their level. She hasn't been singing, you know, in, 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 in a long time. She never, when she did sing, she never was the lead voice. So she probably, like, already feels that kind of way. And then the pressure and then the nagging and then the putting her on the spot and the constantly attacking her would probably make her even seize up even more so i mean of course i think it all you know kind of went with the flow of the show and you know if it's a big moment you know is she gonna sing or isn't she so i feel like the editing and the way they did it had a lot to do with it but at the same time i do have a soft spot because go ahead she's you know well i do agree with your opposition i okay. will say that uh -huh. but the the little twist in it for me is that for the singer who's amongst the best singers the problem is you have to at least try and not and i get if if it was the first day the first couple of episodes but it's like tours you've been around them for a while now they know you y'all been chilling y'all been going to events it's like after a while that gloss has if you're supposed to be there at all mm -hmm. the gloss is supposed to go away and then they become colleagues and we've got to work and and in the sense of being around people who are better than you, it's not that they, so what if they judge you whether or not you're as dope as them, but they're not doing that to her. They're judging off the fact that she's going there and not doing nothing, not saying nothing, not trying nothing in any kind of way that if I can't dance like whoever you want me to dance like, I could be a choreographer's assistant. I could do something that applies to make things better to actually push the engine somewhere, but I don't become just a passenger just sitting there. And, and for, for the sake of her, I just felt like 
every time she sang, they didn't have a problem. I may not have liked it. Me, personally, coming from a viewer's perspective, and I'll compare, but in the sense of the women and wanting to see their sister standing there fighting for a goal, if she's going to be in the situation where she seems like a neophyte, then that's where they're going to look at your heart and your where you stand on really trying to get that dream or not. And if you don't, then what you going to help us out with? But don't just be in my face annoying me. Mm, mm. And they're coming up with these, oh, I'm sick joints. Because that's what that's you can do the, to lose weight and stuff, yeah. too. <laughs> you got to try. You got to get on the treadmill. But if you're just standing next to it, you ain't going to lose no weight. And that is a great segue for us to now talk about Maria Menounos' new book. It's called The Every It's called The Every Girl's I, I say yeah. It's the Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. And now although it says every girl's is for guys as well. Yep. If anyone who knows Maria Menounos, she has a hard rock body. She works out. She does Smart, w, beautiful, she wrestles healthy. with on WWE. Trust me, guys, you can read this book and figure out what will be uh, a guide to diet and fitness. So make sure that you guys go to um, Amazon.com. You guys can go to Barn Nobles or where any books are sold. And you guys must check out this new mm -hmm. book from Maria Menudos. It is entitled The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. But again, it's not just for it's just not for guy, uh, for, for women, but it's for guys as well. All right. So and the book won't work unless you apply yourself. Thank you, Reverend Thank you. Thomas. <laughs> Just say, let's uh, <laughs> let's clear that up. Let's let's uh, let's move away from um, from the one night only. Let's go to Selena. So Selena's in L.A. She's with okay. her sister, and so now she had a couple meetings about mm -hmm. who she's going to sign. And so she said that she's been approached by Sony, and so now she's at Motown Records. Mm -hmm. uh, Motown is known for um, all of the Detroit acts from back in the like the 60s, 70s, mm -hmm. such as Diana Ross and the Supremes, Jackson 5, Temptations, yep. you know, all of those, Sony all of those Robinson. groups. And so now she has opportunity to... Um, to potentially be signed with Motown. And so she met with a friend of hers who's also from Chicago, and his name was Derek Hardy, who does the A&R for Motown. And so she played one of her songs called All This Way For Love. That joint was hot. Yep. I loved it. I yep. love it. And he liked it too. And so Derek says that he basically has to, to pitch, pitch, uh, pitch Selena and her brand and her music to the entire staff of A&R and hopes that they will sign her. And so then she had to think about it. And then she went to me back with, um, with, um, what's brother's Wayne name? Williams. Wayne Williams. Wayne Williams. Williams. And he needed to know right now, are you going to sign with us or what are you going to do? And so, um, what do you guys think about Selena's move and, and, and the, the opportunities to go to Sony and Mar I like the whole spiel. I mean, her, she's been showing hard work, dedication, focusing on what you need to do at hand in order to take your product to the next level. You can see her in the studio, you hear the work, and I thought definitely uh, the catalog for this uh, album sounds really nice mm -hmm. for what she did with music to herself and, and all this other stuff. So I think she's somebody who's giving a blueprint to what you need to do or how you need to care about your product. And before, because she went from having barely any songs to having great songs mm -hmm. that made people want to shop her, well, give her opportunity to shop herself around and put herself in a, uh, well, not a bid award, but definitely an interest uh, for her work. So yeah. for me, I was excited. I thought that was something refreshing that, those are the good things TV wanted to mm -hmm. keep in the show, hey, you know, in, in, uh, in retrospect of all the hogwash and uh, unprofessionalism. I thought that this was a cool dynamic to for the viewer or those who are interested in becoming artists. Yeah, yeah, I think that it was it was obviously great for her to have, you know, the options. I feel like it, it you know, it, it go to the meetings and to show that process. Um, really, you know, puts a light on what it is to be in the industry as an artist. Um, and, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe she could have given it more thought. I, I, maybe, maybe because it's editing and the way they, they, they did the show as far as, you know, chopping it up. But I was like, oh, you're just going to, so you know, no with Sony, no Motown. You're just going to go with Ashton Up. But, I mean, again, she went with, I think she went with her heart and what she knew. Um, and what she felt most comfortable with. So 
at the end of the day, if you know that's what you want, Miss Selena, then go for it. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing partnership. But I would have liked to see her with the Motown, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That was my personal opinion. I don't have an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, you know, I figured. <laughs> I was like, oh, Motown. Just cut in the chat. Oh. And so Mila it wants to change up her style and her image. You know, she's debuting her herself as a solo artist um, to Los Angeles for the first time. So she wanted a new look. And so now she went to see a new stylist in, uh, in, uh, in L.A. named Angel. Um, what are your thoughts? You're a girl on the dresses. Um, they were cool. I, I mean, some of, I like the onesie me. that he did. He had the onesie thing and then he had the dress with the cutout. I thought that was hot. Yeah, blue um, yeah, I think it was, it, it was blue. Oh, nice. Um, I mean, I would definitely check him out, you know, eventually when I you know, get my money right, I'm coming mm. to you, Angel. Um, he was dope. I thought he was dope. And the jacket, I mean, you know, I'm a girl, so I was all about that jacket. Mm. <laughs> I would have rocked it. I thought that was an interesting move. But I loved it. It showed how beautiful that chocolate skin looked. Oh, oh man, she was looking good. In the she dresses. looked amazing. And for though. her to have the problem with, you know, how people perceived her, she definitely, you know, has an ironic with that being an issue for her, having uh, ironic confidence and 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 inner beauty about herself that I like to see. You know, I think sometimes she has a little thing about her personality that gets kind of iffy, but at the same time, you know, I like seeing a strong black woman. I think she knows where she wants to go, like, dress. as an artist. Probably she has a pretty good idea of what, mm -hmm. you know, her target is and who she is. And so I feel like that, that definitely um, shows when she speaks and when she, you know just interacts in general like she knows who Mila is an artist as an artist and when she got up there I thought she looked flawless I was like that the haircut the everything like was it worked for me okay and so let's go into now the one night only so the night backstage Whoa. they're all they're all <laughs> they're all getting glam they're all getting glammed up and um and walks my L.A. Divas. <laughs> the, the L.A. Divas. Oh, Claudette. Mm. Little, little Mo, Shantae Moore, <laughs> yeah. Nisha Lay, and Claudette Ortiz oh, walk in and 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 uh, just say hi. And, you know, they attended. They sat, obviously, in the front row. And uh, they gave them some words of encouragement. I thought that was cool that they made an appearance. I thought that was cool. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a, a good, good. A good like moment, a, a good plug for the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of TV one uh, um, plugs. You saw Elise Neal mm -hmm. in there, uh -huh. who's going to be a part of the uh, Hollywood the Hollywood Divas. Divas. Tammy Roman's on there. She had yep. a show with Elise Neal for um, for something that they had on TV one. I can't remember the name of the show. Uh, Andrea Kelly, or Kelly's ex wife, who mm -hmm. many of us did not know he was married in the first place. Uh, from Hollywood, yeah. she's on the show called Hollywood Exes, which is on VH1. Mm -hmm. She was in attendance. Kim Whitley was the host. The, was the host. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, all right, so now, oh, prior to that, there was a little segment. Um, there was a segment that that they showed in between the commercials where they were fighting over who was gonna have the order. And the girls is like, you know, Kiki was gonna go first and Angie was gonna close. Angie didn't wanna close and so they were kinda had a little spiff about that. Did you, what did you guys think about the order? I thought the order was fine. Mm -hmm. I liked it how, I, I thought Monifa was a strong start. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Did Angie not have a solo song? Well see, th this is what I think happened. I think, Oh, was it edited out? Because that was weird. I think it I was. Think I edited. think it was edited because yeah. during the sound check, Angie was singing "I wish I'd oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I wish I miss you anymore." Yeah, I or wish something. I didn't miss you so anymore. I think yeah. that I think that the yeah. girls probably did maybe two songs or three songs each. Probably. But due to due to the time, they only had them only do one song each. Mm -hmm. Well, that was it, whack to me. Yeah. I will say that because mm -hmm. I was like, "Why are they doing one song? They old song. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be like a." Uh, uh, representing themselves. I just thought it should have been more, but if it was, was more and they edited or if they did not, then I do not agree. Yeah. Yeah. I would hope, yeah. Okay, so my, I didn't like the venue. I didn't like the venue either. I don't like the venue because people are, can people can order food. Uh, just 
I know for people who are not from LA, at that place, you know, it's a it's a sit down place. So people mm. can sit down. There's waiters and, and there's waiters and waitresses mm -hmm. who come and bring you drinks and food. And for me, that's distracting. There was plenty times in the audience where I was seeing other people when they were doing other stuff rather than focusing on the on the on the artist. So I personally don't think that's a great place, or they should not serve food during the performances. I well, for me, if this is like. The show is building up to this one performance. I think, you know, as per, uh, TV One, I'll, I'll blame them for this one. Production-wise, things should have elevated as, you know, you get to that big group performance. And I felt like the venue was cool mm -hmm. for their ch the charity events, some of the stuff that happens. Like uh, Kiki's uh, album um, joint where she did the new country mm -hmm. song uh, that looked venue. like where what, the women should have been, if only, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in retrospect, not to disrespect how they put it together, it just was it's like it was small. It was it was fairly black box like, which is a very empty setting and mm -hmm. just a little lights and stuff. I thought they should have made a real production out of the event. I agree. If, well, yeah, I feel like I I, I assumed the whole this <clears throat> whole time like it was going to be, you know, this build up to this big like like Kiki type, you know, her, her type of venue where she had, and like, you know, lights and things and, and where were all the one night wigs? only and yeah. yeah and there was more celebrities at, at Angie Stone's party. Oh, and yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so when, it, I, it's okay that, in my opinion, it's okay that it was quaint and maybe more intimate, if you will, but it's just all the big setup to this, you know, what I assumed again was, would be this hoopla of an event and, <laughs> You know, I, I didn't obviously. It wasn't that. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's get into the performances. So yeah. now, now that we're at the actual one night only, like I said, the the people that was at the rehearsal, those musicians, they were gone. The background singers, the guy and the girl, gone. Now all of a sudden, now we have the acoustic band, and you have two female back, uh, f female singers on the other side. Mm -hmm. So Monifa performs first, and um, I she did great. great. What do you guys think? I thought she did great. I, yeah, good, I for, great kind of forgot like, I don't, how nice I like her tone mm -hmm. and the tone. Of I like her how voice. she rocks the crowd. I mean, her stage presence. I thought it was a, it was a great song. Uh, other than they're just like, I, it, in comparison to the other performances that you've seen on the show, it's like there's not much of an elevation, but the quality of her voice is really there, and you can mm -hmm. see how great of a performer she is. But I just thought, that, I mean. Uh, vocally, amazing. Yeah, I think her vocals aesthetically are great. cool. You know what I'm saying? And then the venue is just everything was just like. This, for me, this is where I agree with Kiki with the whole acoustic thing. Mm -hmm. She sound great. I can't recall what the name of the song was. I can't. I mean, I saw Little Mo had her hand up. You know, like she mm -hmm. always, she always yeah. gives you that that church moment. Mm -hmm. But um, shout out, hey Little Mo. But, uh, um, but eh, I. I I felt I was waiting for a, a better song or something that's more like if this is the opportunity for all these big wigs to come here, you sing and you're trying to get yourself out there, get an album deal or something. I felt like the song should have been. I just didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she I, sound great, but I, sounded, I didn't like it. She sounded again. I'll say her vocals like were great. The tone in her voice, I like it. I just again think that it probably could have been yeah. better a lot of it could have been better what do you guys think about mila so mila um i like selena and her confessional says um it wasn't mila it was her cult <laughs> featuring <Mila laughs> because mila. uh you know that cult was uh was definitely a showstopper yes when they, when they first I picked it up i thought it was cool mm -hmm. I, I thought that was an interesting movie i mean she yes. she pulls it off as far as how she looks in it and you know, being the right that everything, but for that situation, like the venue should have matched her outfit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then everything would have fell more into place. But because her outfit was so bow, and you know the song was cool, you know. But I think that's who Mila is. I think that she would have showed up like bow, and whether it was a little karaoke bar, like because I think I feel like she. Per really knows who she wants to be or who she is as an artist so to her she saw the money shot she saw the money jacket and that was it and she, it, it, you could put her in a you know alleyway and she still would have rocked it <laughs> she looked she looked great then, like like you know like alfred said the venue the lighting everything it just didn't it didn't, didn't compliment, compliment it didn't compliment yeah. her outfit so it looked like she was in a black box yeah her vocally 
um I can't remember I can't remember the song that she did because it was you know she it was singing a song of 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 a feeling that obviously she was going through yeah. but me, it was cool. Mila for me is she's a little airy when she sings for me and I can only take so much of her singing from what I've been hearing her sing lately when she was with 702 um she wasn't as she wasn't as airy uh there's just something about her something about her voice and her tone that just does not do it for me anymore i would say based off of what you said i halfway agree with it in the sense that she doesn't really come off like a solo vocalist like mm -hmm. most of the other women do you know especially when it comes to the la divas all of them are powerhouse songstress where she is, I can see her coming into it or, you know, it's not a, uh, she's not far, off. she's definitely a lead and I think her voice goes really well with the girl group. That's why she's yeah. so, I think she messed really well with the, the vocals really hovering with her and rather the, than being like a Yeah, and the production voice. was better and I think Missy did a lot of the stuff and so like it was, it was, uh, catered to her. it was catered and the production value of it was, was more catered to her voice. The stuff that she's singing now, doesn't do it for me. I'm sorry, Mila. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's all right. <laughs> okay, Selena. So Selena decides. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Selena decides that she's That's going when the show to. Started. She's going to. Um, she's going to test the mic before the song starts, so that the mic is not oh. popping and doing any other stuff. <laughs> and so she's testing out the mic, and now all of a sudden, now we have a sound issue. Mm. I've never been and again i'm sorry that i keep throwing this out there because i live in la but i've never been to uh to that venue where the sound was that damn terrible mm -hmm. again could this be something that tv one concocted maybe but i thought it was funny conspiracy and so i thought the song was hot i thought the song was hot mm -hmm. and then during the performance it goes out again and then she goes off she says you gonna fix this mf and <laughs> then like I, I the, think sound, like a true artist. the sound the okay. sound comes uh the the sound comes back and she says there it is then she looked at him she said are you ready now mm. um what do you guys think uh weird uh again i think the for the overall tag is lack of preparation equals lack of results and that's what i don't think it was lack of preparation because they already did the sound check and i think the, somebody just messed up they i, I don't this, know. it was the sound check um but then again, I mean, it wasn't well, like they see, had perfect. But, but see, but see, they had the, the sound yeah. check was with different musicians. Yeah. Now you have new musicians, the musicians who were supposed to be there. So I guess you may would expect that. But then my question Not is to that extreme. But when they did the when they did the sound check the day of, we didn't actually see who the musicians were. But for the most part, the musicians were keeping on were, were keeping on track. It was the sound. It was the mic. It was so the mic. you can't blame the musicians. I, you have to blame the sound guy. Yeah. And that's exactly right. who she blamed. I I was you, right you with her. Like I feel like a true <laughs> like a true artist. She was just like, look, I ain't gonna do. I ain't about to sit up here and you know if the if this ain't right. Mm. So I'll wait. Yeah. I felt, and then when it was ready, are you yeah. ready? I felt like I, <laughs> I felt like how Selena reacted is appropriate i've seen several art artists when they go to some of these spots and the sound is not right they go off which i mean i wouldn't knock on her for that i just for me <clears throat> it was just like i didn't want to see that i just wish that couldn't have would have been prepared for it not to have happened because yeah. i really wanted them to win you yeah. know what i mean it's and embarrassing it's embarrassing yeah, yeah. and then it, it becomes the whole event mm -hmm. becomes embarrassing, not just oh a messed up performance, mm -hmm. because then it becomes the re when you see the dialogue between her and the sound guy and the frustration. Then you start to look around and realize, you know, this is not mm -hmm. really put together properly or something like that. And I I wanted to get caught up in seeing these women perform and have a great time and. It'd be great, but for that but to fall so short, it's like, yeah, they got to get something in there to, to ooh, ruffle the feathers. Like, is the sound going to be okay? And oh, the, the crowd, the crowd was into it. You saw that all of the divas were singing back up to 
to Selena's song. You even mm -hmm. saw uh, you even saw Latavi singing back up. So these women obviously had rehearsal because for they were able to to sing back up mm -hmm. on Selena's song. So I thought sneaky TV one. I thought that was great. Then Kiki gets up and she does. Um, oh. um, if only you knew the mm -hmm. remake of uh, yes. Paula Bell's. If only you knew. I mean, what can we? I don't even think we need to say anything she's about the Kiki. MVP. I Thanks mean, she's Kiki, she MVP slayed. MVP of the group. Her she's, voice. She slayed. She was playful with the crowd. Um, I mean, what? at the end of the day, it's like Kiki yeah. is just. She knows, like she can, like Monifa said, like if God didn't do nothing else, that voice. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, like Selena said in the confessional, she could complain, she can walk out, she could, you know, do whatever she want to do. But when she gets up and she sings, she sings. Like a she slayed. I don't. There's. You can't say yeah, nothing. There's about nothing. It. There's nothing. Amazing. Yeah. And then Angie Stone gets up and sings the sister song, and then they all come up and they sing. Now. Um, dun dun dun. So <laughs> they're all kind of looking around, seeing if Latavia is going to sing her part, and. And she sings a part. Let me go first. <laughs> yes, let me let me go, go first. first I can't. This is for everybody <laughs> who always wants to get. This is for everybody who always wants to get <laughs> on Latavia about why she should sing, why she should sing. So Latavia, <laughs> she gets up and she sings her part. She had two parts that we heard. She sound terrible. Why the hell oh. have you guys have been <laughs> you guys have been complaining? She should sing. Why is she on the show? Y'all want her to sing and she sunk and she sound terrible. Now are you happy? Are you yes. Happy? Are you happy? I am happy. Why are you happy? She sound terrible. Because she would have sound better had she started singing a long time ago. No, but if you want to wait till the last minute, you gonna get up there on stage and I'm gonna watch you fail. And I have no problem with that because at least you did what you're supposed to do, which is sing. Thank you for joining the show finally, Natavia. <laughs> Whether it was good or bad, I commend you yeah, I for having the gonads to finally succumb mm -hmm. to the pressure or whatever. Oh. I don't care about that. And I didn't like it, but that was the least of my, my issue like with that. I was sitting there happy that she finally did something in a performance stance. I mean, we've heard her sing the little bit, but I thought if she would have applied herself from the very beginning, this would be a nicer situation, but hey, I'll take whatever realness <laughs> I, like I can get from you. That was real like for me, and I'm cool with it. People kind of were I don't like, judge you, baby. "Oh, that's why she hasn't sung." Like, "Oh, mm -hmm. okay, I get it." Because no, she, in my opinion, she didn't sound great. Um, but again, high five, girl, for at least doing it because mm -hmm. if you if that camera had gone to her and she hadn't said nothing that would have been completely made me break my TV. Like, i mean what? it was embarrassing when she did sing a little bit i'm sorry um <laughs> but it would have been completely highly over the top embarrassing if that if it had gone to her part and it just been crickets like oh girl now you just now you don't set up the homies you I set just, up the whole thing I for think, this big moment I think people wanted to hear her sing to see how she would sound because I think probably people thought she would sound a mess and they want that confirmation to able, and they want the confirmation to be able to talk about her. Uh, there was a there was an Instagram video that posted that that Mila posted where she was in a studio singing Drake's Hold On. She sounded terrible then too. I just think that listen, you're not a lead singer. Stop allowing these people to to embarrass yourself, especially when you were in a group that Beyonce. Michelle, oh, Michelle was the, she was a replacement girl. Mm. And look at what she's doing. And it's just mm. like, I feel like she should, she should stop letting people try to push her to the forefront to sing. She's not a lead singer. Uh, she sounds terrible and apparently she doesn't want to sing. I think she should tell everybody that wants her to sing to F you and to do what she want to do, whether if it's acting or whatever, but stop singing until your <laughs> vocals are ready to go. So that means if you need to do two more years of, of vocal lessons by yourself with no cameras until you're ready, then don't do that because you're going to have people that's going to go in at you, go, that's going to go in, uh, go in for you at it and they're going to continue to let her have it. She should not have songs. She should not have let Mila record on that video for Instagram seeking Drake. Don't sink until you're ready. I agree. But at the same time, for signing up for the show and being a part of it, I commend you. I'm, I don't think anybody uh, expects perfection all the time uh, or around the clock. And no one can, you know, always make a perfect moment or be perfect. But being somebody who tries 
and effort does count for who you are and how people see you. I think, yes, she does need to go somewhere and, you know, practice and all that. And <laughs> she, she if she would somewhere. have done that before she got on the show, and that, like I said, that's like how you pointed out, that is TV One and for putting her on the show and putting her in that position. But at the same time, you know, we all have challenges and it's better to be seen as someone who steps up to the challenge than someone who doesn't. I'm just wondering if she really, that. really thought that through that that would be the best time for her to start singing like well, that's what <laughs> one night a minute like that's you know that's I mean? the time you choose when it's the it's the as they been they said the ninth hour i would have chose like the third hour possibly to start getting a little like do re mis in there i don't think really... she was like drown wrenching horrible or anything no, like it that just wasn't of course that you good. can tell in, in the sense of quality vocal singing yeah you want to compare that and be and say anything she was nice. i was hoping but it was going to be better time, had she had, Put that effort that she waited to the end way earlier where the women could have been working with her and it really get, digging she in. She didn't I'm want that sure help though. She, cause that was like two little, little parts. It wasn't like it was vocally insanity that she had to do. She could have prepared for that moment, but mm -hmm. cause she didn't, it was what it was, but I commend you for at least stepping up to the plate. Cause that's ridiculous. I mean, like I said, it was ridiculous to me to see her and those tired excuses, not, not because she doesn't, uh, I have, I'm judging her, but because just as people, you want to see people striving for better out of themselves rather than just coming up with, or like I said, she could apply herself another way and mm -hmm. did a monologue. I don't know, <laughs> but something that would have made her presence on the show. And then that moment, you know, substantial. Well, where there's a, like I said from the beginning, I feel like anything. she should have hosted I'll it. I rock with you. Well, we're going to, um, we're going to wrap this up, but now let's go into, let's go into news and gossip. Mm -hmm. After Buzz TV News. And I told you she was gonna be wet. So I have just a little uh, some information. So every every week after we tape the show, I always tweet out the episode where you can watch us on YouTube uh, to all the army divas and whoever else I think is watching it. And so Monifa, she retweeted it and then she replied back to me saying that I have my she have she says I have my which is in all caps reasons for my perspective. Sometimes I wish reality shows were shot in real time and unedited. Cool recap. Thank you, Monifa. Hey, thanks, Mom. Thank you. We so, love all y'all. <laughs> yeah. So the I thought that was cool. So now let's go into predictions. And now your After Buzz TV predictions. All right, who wants to go first? Um, I predict that. Well, I predict that it's going to be a really nice wedding. I, I, I hope. I mean, of course, they got to throw a wrench or two in there for the ratings and for the, you know, um, for the crazy that it, <laughs> reality shows bring. But I think for the most part, I think it should be um, a very, hopefully, like, heartfelt um, episode. I think weddings in general bring that kind of love and positivity. Um, into into any atmosphere so i really hope that it's going to be that kind of episode but that's that's my hope and prediction go ahead i honestly being an optimist okay. you know i was right about the time it was a voice so i'm kind of cool i don't even know i, I don't know where these women are gonna go but i think they'll the definitely the wedding is gonna bring them together mm -hmm. i'll say that and then um i don't know they did their one night only and i mean that was hopefully one night only <laughs> and uh they could figure out another grander show to do mm -hmm. or going towards some, I mean, now that uh, Selena and Angie are doing better, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like they could probably come up with something that they all could agree upon. I just hope they go about it the right way. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly have a, I don't have a prediction. Uh, it's a wedding. I think this is a, I think it's a season finale and it's a wedding. I really wish it's the best wedding because you only get married once for a month for many people. Not no and more. And it's, you know, it's their wedding, so I really hope that everything goes off without a hitch, and I don't want to wish anything bad upon a wedding because you can't you can't redo a wedding. Mm. Right. So I really wish it the best, and, uh, you know, we wish that you guys uh, tune in next week when we uh, recap episode 10. So we want to thank you guys for watching. Let everyone know where you can be found on social media. Hi, guys. You can find me on IG and Twitter at I am Taisha Monique. That's the letter I, the letter M, Taisha Monique, and on Facebook at Taisha Monique.
And you can find me on Twitter at All Eyes on Black, properly spelled, and on Instagram at A N T the number two black. And you can find me at all social media at Bam Erickson. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. From Ooh. executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs>